everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to be uh, not doing a tutorial as much as just showing you guys-ish um, the step-by-steps of how I'm making the multi-layer like pixie petal is what I call it um, fairy skirt to go along with my Capricorn cosplay. Now you could do this in a variety of different fabrics and textures to kind of make it match if you want it more steampunky, if you want it more fae, if you want it more elven. Um, just kind of do what you're going to do. I'm going for like a very Caribbean sea foam uh, goat. <laughs> Um, look, so I'm gonna show you how I cut out all the fabric and everything, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. Okay, so now that we have everything cut out and I've gone ahead and stitched together, I cut the waistband to be way longer than what I need it because the way that I do these pixely petal skirts, um, they're no size. It's uh, People will say, oh, it's one size fits on. I'm like, no, this is no size. It is literally like a bunch of fabric just bunched down onto an elastic waistband. So it really is one size fits all so long as you're below like, oh, What's it like a 120 inch hips? <laughs> like because it has that much fabric. Now it's gonna be super stretched out and not gonna have that really awesome gathered look, but I want a ton of fabric, a ton of like, um, so that whenever I spin or move it, I want it to be able to make a full circle around me multiple times. Like, cause then it'll get like those cool waves and stuff in it. So hopefully you guys will see. So I gave myself plenty of waistband um, that is basically not quite scrap fabric, but, um, it doesn't take a whole lot of fabric because I'm using a very thin elastic because this is going underneath a corset. Um, but you can see I could fit, even with a quarter inch, uh, seam allowance, I could fit like a half inch or maybe even a three quarters inch elastic through here. Um, you can make your waistband wider if you like, but I don't like a lot of room for the elastic to possibly twist around in. I'll get nice and snug in its casing. Um, and then we can just trim off whatever extra. I'm saving all of the scrap fabric from this project to try to make a little doll dress to match what I'm doing, maybe. I've never made a doll dress before, so if, I mean, it's gotta be easier than making a full size one, right? Said every Vaughn ever on every project I've ever tried and it's never easier. But anyways, so we've gone through and I'm going to go, and you can see this seams, these edges here, um, are all folds. So I'm going to go through and with a quarter inch seam allowance, sew together all the different panels of each of these three layers that we're working with here. So um, I'm going to try to get this all on camera so that y'all can see what I'm doing, and then I'll meet y'all right back here again. So super awesome time lapse, maybe. Okay. 
Okay, so I want to talk to you guys a bit because on my serger, it keeps gathering it, which is a pain in my butt. So I'm leaving quite a bit of tail on here. And you can actually just take, and I don't know if it's something with the tension on my serger, nothing I've been doing has been fixing it. And this is so much easier, but I'm just taking it and gently running my fingers over the serged line. And you can see this basically relaxed that full ruffle and gather out of it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so on the pattern that I used, that I don't have immediately on hand, I'll link it down below. Um, which, for those of y'all who aren't aware, there's a video description box down where you scroll down just a bit, um, whether you're on mobile or a computer device, and there'll be like a little show more button. And if you click that, it'll have all the links and everything to not just my social media, but also um, where like the fabric, the tools that I'm using, the patterns that I'm using, all those sorts of different stuff. But um, the pattern called for cut four on fold. And I'm quite large around, like I'm about 50 inches working on it, but currently I'm 50 inches. And this is not going to give me enough fabric to gather down. So I'm going to try to cut maybe, because I mean, I don't know if you can see, let me angle the camera down just a bit more for you guys. There we go. Um, I want much more of a gather. Like I kind of want this and this concentration of gather to be happening as opposed to that all like drawn out and wide um so i'm gonna see if i can't actually cut two to four more pieces of this to condense down because that way i want it to i mean realistically to have a little bit more of that drape that way the movement as it spins and stuff will be much nicer I do think so fortunately I have a little bit of extra fabric and I am going to see how many cuts I can get out of this with that fabric hopefully it'll be quite a bit <laughs> okay so I have sewn I actually cut out four more petals I had enough fabric to do that but it used up the rest of my bolt and so you can see it gave me quite a bit um, but the key here is you want to make sure that all of your seams boop, that you're making stay in line with each other. So to do that, I just pick up another peplum. I call them petals, but for some reason in the pattern they're called peplums. I have no idea what that is. What, what on earth is a peplum? I guess I could Google it. Um, and I'm just lining it up. I didn't even bother pinning on these. I really didn't. And I'm going to angle this down and I'm surging in the last one. gave myself that very long tail because now I can come through and kind of just pet like run my fingers down the length of this to get rid of that gather which I'm gonna try to use this gather that it does um, to my benefit because now this is way longer than what my waistband is um, and I don't have any more fabric to cut a waistband um, so now I'm going to join these two ends together, this end following all the way around to the other end so that my skirt will be a complete circle, making sure I've got the right ends together and the correct sides together. Yep, and it does look like it and we want to make sure that there aren't any twists either in the fabric no mobius style stuff happening here okay so we're good all the way down and now i'm going to do this last seam i love my serger a lot of people find a serger intimidating but this model in particular in particular is very easy to thread um and i think it's perfect for being able to give a nice finish bound off edge to all of your work. 
especially on fabrics like this that like to come unraveled on you. basically end of my thread now. So I'm just gonna snip off this knot. Sorry, it all came jumbled off the spool like a mess. There we go. And before trimming it, so otherwise it'll undo our stitching. Just tighten it out. Okay. Now we can trim it. And so now I'm going to re-thread. You have to re-thread the whole machine, otherwise, like cutting corners does not save you any time. I'm out of thread on this bobbin, so I'm going to replace that, and then I'll meet you back here, and I'm going to go through and try to do a preemptive gather with my serger uh, so that I can add the waistband later. Now you can see here, I gave myself quite a long tail, that way we can try to distribute, like even this out a little bit. But this basically accomplished the same thing that doing a basting stitch and then pulling on the threads would have done. So we can try to redistribute some of the areas that are a little bit more, you know, kind of super bunched up. Just kind of taking, slide it around. And what we'll do is we'll actually go through and pin this to our waistband um, to get it held in place and keep everything nice and evenly distributed. And then I'll deal with this obnoxiously long tail then. So on this fabric, um, you can see you can actually pull it and fray it, which is a problem. So I've gone through on this test sample. Um, and melted the edge with a lighter. I'm gonna show you how I do Try to not have it frayed. First off, this is something you wanna go in and do while it's still clean and fresh because these frays will bundle down into boogers like that that you'll have to trim off. So we just take it and you'll notice, I mean, it's not coming like on fire. It will if there's enough of it on these long pieces, but you just want to, I mean, barely touch it. If you do it too long, it's going to pucker, but cools off very quickly. Do this with a bucket of water nearby because this stuff feels like melted, I mean, just painful flame whenever little melted off bits land on you. But that is how I'm going to go through and seal all of my edges on this. It's going to be horribly tedious. Yay. <laughs> also, I wanted to show you guys another thing with the way that I folded and cut out this uh, fabric is it actually ended up being one big, like this, it's a fold on this side and it's a fold on this side. So I'm going to have to go through and cut up the length of one of these sides here, which I'm just going to do with my scissors. Fortunately, it has a very like secure fold. And I'm just taking it and trimming up the side. And I have two pieces of this, so I'm going to do that to both of them. 
if y'all are interested, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll do an in-depth tutorial just on how to do this style of skirt, the kind of pixie petal um, skirt, because you can see the way that it hangs has a really nice drape to it. But now this is da -da -da -da, one big long piece and I love the way that this fabric moves and kind of floats. It's a little crunchy right now, but we can work with that. So now I'm going to do that to the other one. I'm going to go through and singe all the hems. Um, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. So I want to show y'all a trick of how I like to get lazy, even pleats. Um, you can see I just fed through one little pleat here. So I've come to the edge of my machine and I'm just pinching and folding over. This is a really messy way to get pleats. I like it for the style of work that I do. Then after I've fed through another pleat, I'm just gonna pinch and fold. It saves me from having to go through and do all the stinking pins and measuring and everything. So, um, and again, I only do this on pieces where it's gonna be so big and flowy that kind of the measurement doesn't matter, like chemises and stuff. Uh, so, you just fold and feed, just like that. Now, I'm going through and I'm doing this around the entire uh, waistband, well, where the waistband will be attaching of this skirt, and I'm just doing it on a basting stitch. That's my largest stitch, my size four. And that way, if I mess up, it's really easy. It's much easier, if you can call seam ripping easy, it's much easier to take out large stitches than it is a bunch of little stitches. And I'm also giving myself a very wide uh, seam allowance, kind of irregular too. Um, just again, with the style of this skirt, honest to goodness, just doesn't matter. But I don't want to do it so close to the edge that uh, I'm risking deviating off of my fabric and not catching uh, the, the thread through the fabric. So you can see here, we're coming along real nice. So I'm gonna finish up doing this and then I'll meet y'all right back here for the next steps. Um, now I'm gonna be going through and again with a basting stitch. Um, right now I'm just kind of trying to get everything pieced together. I'm gonna go through and attach the waistband without anything in it, um, to our skirt base. This is going to be our most bottommost layer, so I'm going to get it attached on, and then um, we'll do the next layer, so I'll meet you guys right back here. So this is how it's coming out so far. I really am loving that hem. I just, I love the way it's moving and everything. So now, next, we have this mess here, which it was all straight whenever I cut it out, and now it is just a cozy nightmare. Um, so, and I have the same problem with this one as what I had with the other, which I mean really I, I don't have to call it a problem. Now this stuff is a netting, so you don't have to worry about it fraying, which is really nice. Um, so you can kind of see the way it just lays like that. This hem makes me so happy. Like, seriously, though. Oh, look at those little... Ah. Okay. La, la, la. What are we going to do with this? So, I'm going to come to a point that's quite narrow. Now, also, this stuff is super stretchy. And I just slice it right up the side there. That gave us a relatively even cut. That was a miracle. Um, and so, now I'm going to be taking this and where's our other piece there's another one relatively narrow spot and I don't mind at all that this is going to be a jagged mess that's just this is life now Boop, just like that there we are and so now oh my face is all this one I am actually going to pin to our base because I need this to not be really bad. If that makes sense. So 
how are we gonna do this? Because the problem with this one though, and this is a problem, is that this fine netting is getting tangled in our hem. So there's that in our hem of this blue stuff. So I'm gonna try to have it hang in a way that um, keeps it above the blue netting. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> So I've gotten all the pieces of the skirt sewn together with the exclusion of our fluffy gauzy fabric. I'm actually going to make a second overskirt um, because we're blurry. Uh, I'm going to make a second overskirt that way um, I can decide if I want it. And I think I might need to make it like a different length and I don't mind having multiple waistbands on this outfit. Um, also, this might let me be able to diversify and use this, uh, the blue part of the skirt in other costumes. So, layering. But what I'm doing is I've measured out the waistband. Um, this stuff has like, let me hold that there, super stretch to it. So, I think it's going to hold on pretty well. Um, and I'm just coming through and I'm just hand stitching the ends together, making sure that there's no twists. So, I want a nice flat um, piece of elastic all the way through. And then I am going to get y'all some footage of how I'm going to sew in the waistband because I don't think this is the most efficient way of um, <laughs> putting in a waistband ever, but it's how it's happening, so let's do it. <laughs> So now to get this evenly distributed, I'm just going to kind of take it and stretch it and take it and stretch it and take it and stretch it. You get the idea. Um, and this will just evenly distribute throughout the waistband. So you can see just that super cute little hem and how much stretch this skirt has. But I absolutely love all the texture and layers of this piece. Okay, so here is the costume so far. This is Bertha up on our table. So you can see how the corset looks over the chemise. Um, definitely changes the look of the piece. I'm actually, I've decided on seeing how much the color of the corset does not match the rest of the color of the outfit. I'm gonna be wearing the corset underneath um, the chemise, like corset, chemise layer, and then breastplate layer. And I'm going to be using the corset on myself as like a, um, to make a duct tape mold so I can do a form fitted breastplate that will fit me the way that the corset shapes me down to. Now let me turn this for you guys so you can see. This is her booty. This is how the booty looks. Uh, I'm really loving all of the little, I don't know if you can see the beadwork that's up around the top, but it's the same beadwork that's done here on the hem. And speaking of hems, y'all, I am so excited about all these different layers upon layers upon layers 
of interesting hem and texture. I'm actually going to be going through on this one. This one, I'm going to, this layer, I'm just going to leave, sorry for the blurry camera, um, this layer I'm just going to leave singed and super light and flowy, but then this layer I'm going to go through and do more of the same beadwork just to keep that motif uh, continuous throughout, but you can really see just the volume that this adds, all sorts of stuff. So now I want to see how it's going to look with this layer of gauzy netting. Let's see, I'm going to... And that, that's my problem is that it snags on the hem so much. So I might come through and shorten it down significantly. Where's the pins at? I love myself a foam dress form. So I really want more of this uh, sandy colored, just more texture. <laughs> But I don't know how much of it, and I am going to be making it a, a removable layer. Like it's not going to be attached to the same waistband. That way, if I decide one day in the future to do a different outfit using this same skirt, I'll be able to do that. And I'm just coming through with uh, some straight pins. and pinning on this layer of uh, netted gauze with it bunched up quite a bit because I wanted to see how it looks just a little shorter. And then once we have it on here, we'll be able to step back and consider the, uh, the pros and cons. Okay. I like it being very short because I don't want to hide this beautiful, beautiful color of this tool um, or this polyester fabric that we did the burnt edges on. So I don't know, still just trying it on for size, seeing how it looks. Because keep in mind, this looks quite sparse right now, but I need this layer here because that's what the belt is going to be laying on, and it's going to keep it from getting tangled up in all of the layers below it. But I think, y'all, I think I am going to go with doing the gauze layer. So you saw I was using this ruler as a guide to make sure that the waistband stayed relatively the same width. Now I have a knit elastic and a half inch wide, um, and about a yard of it, uh, and I left a gap so that I can get in to the waistband. And now, and the, I have not trimmed this down to its final length. I'm leaving myself lots of elastic to work with because I've got it attached to a safety pin and now I'm just going to very carefully um, and patiently, oh boy patiently, um, thread this through the waistband just like this and I'm just pushing a little bit at a time and then whenever I get a good bit gathered up I'm just going to pull it on through and Slip, slip, slip. I mean, I'm working in like half inch increments here, but you can see how quickly that got all of that slid on. So I am going to keep just slip, 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 and slide. Slip, 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 and slide. Yeah, I try to not let um, the amount of gathering build up too much just because you're more likely to get snagged. Just little baby steps, little increments, you'll be just fine. Slip, slip. 
and it just I mean using the rounded head of the safety pin is so so nice I used to try to do this with like crochet hooks and rubber bands and like all kinds of stuff and then I saw this on the internet and I was like what <laughs> so and you can see it's really getting a good gather going now uh, just make sure it doesn't slide off the end of your work so that's why I leave myself with so much it's because the last thing you want to have to do is do this again <laughs> which I think that's a fair statement so I'm going to continue this around for the rest of the way and then I'll meet you all right back here so I've gotten to the end and seems like everything worked out okay um make sure your skirts all go in the same direction this fabric is like weighs next to nothing so it's so light and gauzy and airy it's so pretty i love it Oof. okay so i want to to establish how much elastic i'm going to need i think that'll do me I want to I want to get more of this material and use it for just about everything now I'm coming through I've started if both of my loose ends are over here I found the opposite end made sure it's flat and now I'm just inching along making my way back to my two loose ends because you want to make absolute certain that there are no twists in this you will be su surprised at how uncomfortable those get throughout the day as you're wearing your outfit. Okay, so now I'm going to remove my safety pin and I'm going to snip it because I have it at the length that I want. And I am just going to sew these two ends together and then go through and do one last stitch with my sewing machine to get that gap closed off. Um, and then, again, I'll meet y'all right back here. <laughs>